My name is John Melby. This is Gaming with Madness, and today we're going to talk about one of my most favorite games, Great Western Trail. It's from 2016, and it's probably the most played game I have since 2016, and certainly my most favorite game in the last couple years. So, it's a game about deck building, it's about moving herds of cows from Fort Worth to Kansas City, it's from originally Stronghold Games, my copy since then. The rights have been passed to a new publisher who I think is Plan B. Um, the designer, Alexander Pfister, ha is a classic designer. He's got a lot of other great games out. Isle of Sky, Maracaibo, um, Oh My Goods. It's a two to four player game. It's going to take at least two hours, maybe three if you're not particularly fast. And it's a fairly complex game. There's a lot of moving parts. It's going to take a good 20 to 30 minutes to explain the full rules to this game, but we'll give you a summary quickly here. The Great Western Trail is a complex game. It has a lot of moving parts here, tons of bits. They're all interrelated. The game plays until you've filled up this labor market and bought everything out of the labor market. Eventually, this, as you fill it up, this token gets down. When you get to the end, the game's over. Now, there's a lot of things going on, but the core of the game is delivering cows to Kansas City. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit of depth and then skim over the rest of the game and then talk about what happens when you play and what's interesting. So, cows. If you didn't know it, people that buy cows are obsessive. And what that means is when you send in a herd of cows, they'll only pay for one cow of each type. So I come in with a herd of cows that's two green cows and two gray cows, they'll only pay for one green and one gray. So, in the game, we've got a bunch of different cows. we got cows values one, two, three, four, and five. My initial hand is all these ones and two cards, and essentially we start out with this, which is three each of each of the colors of twos, and five of the ones. Now the problem is, if I come to Kansas City, take my little cow man and move all the way up here, I can only get money for one of the twos and one of the ones, so I score three money out of this, which is not really a lot for going all the way out here. Ideally, for the first time out, when my hand size is only four, I can do something like this where all four cards are different, and I get seven money. That's a big difference, and that counts. So, what happens in Kansas City, and what are you doing to make this money more? Because that's, that's part of the heart of the game, is getting the right amount of money. At Kansas City, three things happen. You replenish the board, and largely you take things here and add things into the labor market so you have more people to hire. Then you sell your cows for a certain amount of money, and there are some bonuses we haven't talked about. And then you take and deliver them to something along the railroad here. And your problem is, if your railroad does not go all the way to, say, Santa Fe, where I want to deliver it, you're going to have to pay some of your money to actually deliver it that far. But that's okay. And then somewhere along you mark here that you've got that, which may give you victory points at the end. So how do you improve your cows? There's a bunch of ways, but largely there's three ways. You can churn your hand. For example, down here this says, I can discard a white card, which is in one of these places, for some money, and then at the end of your turn you draw back up your hand size. So, if I have these double twos, I find a place like here that I can sell one of those, draw a new card, and I've made my hand better. That's a basic way. The second way is to go to the cow herd place where you buy new cows. And at the moment we've got a setup of a bunch of cows down there. You buy a new cow, it goes into your discard stack, and as you shuffle your deck, this new cow of a different color and a different value makes your herd better. Um, the third way out there is there's a bunch of little bonuses out there that will make your that will make your cows a little bit better. Um, oh, the the last way you can make your hand better is you can increase your hand size to five or six cards. And obviously, with five or six cards, you've got more money out there. So, getting the cows better and getting your hand of cows better is an important part of the game. It's not the only part. So, what else do we have here? Let's skim over the whole board, just give you an overview now that you see the cows. Uh, we've got a game board here. At the moment, we've got neutral buildings that don't belong to anyone, anybody. We've got some hazards here, some Native American teepees, there's no rivers here, other stuff. 
And as you move along the board, you have a movement limit starting at four. So you go one, two, three, four. So you don't pay for any empty spaces. Later on, people will build their own buildings out there and you will pay for those. It'll cost you extra movement and it may actually cost you money as you move around people. We've got a railroad track here that everybody builds their railroads on. We've got a track here where you're showing where you're delivering your goods for victory points at the end of the game. And then here's the labor market that you buy people from. You've also got your own stack here that has a bunch of buildings you can build. You've got a bunch of these yellow tokens and as you move these yellow tokens off here onto various spots on the board, you unlock new abilities. For example, I move this out there somewhere on the board. Now I have a hand size of five and five cards will give me a lot more money than four. Uh, there's a bunch of other things that happen here, but that's kind of immaterial for this point at the moment. So, we're building up buildings, establishing new things to help our uh, cow, cow herd go up through the Great Plains all the way from Texas to Kansas City. And as you build buildings, you put this out here. This is now my building because it's yellow. Um, I get another building out. And depending on what these things are, I can land on there and I can do things that other, other players can't. So, this is pretty much what's going on in the game here. So what happens in the play? Well, in the play, on your turn, you move your worker, land on a spot and do something. Ideally, you want to land on a spot that's neutral, which gives you a power, or your own building, which gives you a power. If you land on somebody else's building, you get a little something, but you don't want to. And you keep moving till you get up to Kansas City, and we talked about Kansas selling your cows and dropping a disc. And you keep going through that. In a game, you'll probably deliver to Kansas City five to seven times. Um, you can move up here faster, which is good because you get more deliveries, but you get to do a lot less actions on the make game map. So, the big things that happen in the game map, there are there are a lot of little things, but there are four real big things going on that you got to use, and I'll just briefly talk about them. You can buy new workers. You're buying workers from here. For example, I buy this worker that's a cowboy. There's a craftsman, and there are engineers. Down here I build buildings, and the more craftsmen I have, the better buildings I can build and the cheaper I can build. Uh, up here, this thing lets me build railroads. And that lets me push my railroad out here, which means we, I deliver more and I get bonuses along the way. And finally here, we've got the cow, uh, cow sales office, uh, I don't know, which lets you buy more cows. And depending on the workers you've got, if you have one cowboy, you're going to buy one cow and it's going to cost you a lot of money. If you have four or five cowboys, you're going to get a bunch of cows and it'll be a lot cheaper. Same thing, if you have engineers, your railway is going to build thicker, quicker. With craftsmen, you're going to build more buildings. So, all of this at the end says, how do we win? Well, this is basically the cowboys, as you expect, cowboys rate their own power by victory points. Then they get victory points by four or five different places. Each cow you buy is worth victory points. The simple blue is worth three, the yellow is worth one. The purple is up to six. Cows give you victory points. By moving on the railroad, there's a bunch of victory points you get. And these buildings are worth victory points. For example, this building is worth six victory points. Um, additionally, there's going to be a few other ways that I haven't talked about that are end game points that add on to it. And that puts this whole thing together. You've got to do a lot of things. You've got to deliver cows. You've got to buy the right guys. You've got to buy cows. Maybe you want to build buildings. Maybe you want to go out and take care of some of these hazards to make alternate paths cheap. Everything goes into this game in a fairly complex fashion. So this has been my favorite game since this came out in 2016. It's a long, complex game. It's rated like 3.7 out of 5, and it deserves everything of the complexity. There's an expansion to it that I like a lot. Some people don't care for it. They think it makes it too complex, but tastes vary. Um, it has alternative setups. You can change the starting setup. There's alternative buildings you can use. So there's a lot of vari variability in the game. Um, plus, one of the nice things, this is a nice, rich game. There's a lot of theme here. You have a feeling of, I'm moving cows. I'm expanding buildings in the Great Plains, expanding into the West. Uh, it's not 
overwhelming theme, but it's also not abstract. It's really the perfect level of theme for my particular taste. The other very nice thing about this is while other people are making their turns, I can plan what I'm going to do. The other people are going to interact with me. They're not going to interact with me so much that I can't plan. Now, obviously, if I plan to build a building here and somebody builds ahead of me, they've got a, a little change in my plans or somebody buys the cows I want. But there isn't so much interaction that I can't plan ahead of time so it speeds up the game. And there's not so little interaction that I feel like I'm playing alone. There's largely three different approaches to the game. Your strategy can send a lot of cows to Kansas City and make money from cows. You can build railroad and get a lot of points from the railroad. Or you can build a lot of buildings which slows down other players and gets points from your for buildings. So there's three different ways of doing it and a lot of people have their own preferred way of actually filling this out. During the game, money is real tight. It's not like you don't have a lot of money, but there's a lot of stuff to spend money on. These workers are fairly expensive. The cows can be really expensive. The beginning buildings are only two to four money, but near the end, they can get up to 15 or 20 money. So there's a lot of places you spend money. You've got to make money and you've got to make a hard decision what you're going to spend it on. Truly, I've played dozens of games here and I don't still understand everything that goes on. My only two issues of the game are the complexity and the rule book. The complexity itself is not bad. I like games this complex, but it takes a while to teach. There are so many icons in this game, so many pieces. It takes at least 20 minutes and more likely 30 minutes to get a new player to the point where they can play the game. And that's a little bit of a pain that links to the first play. The problem with the rule book, while I like the way it's structured, it explains pieces in the game, and when it explains it, it shows all the icons and the pieces that go with the game. So you learn it right there, but if I go back for reference, I have to find the rule section that has the pictures of those game pieces and icons. You can solve that by going online and finding little cheat sheets that will show you all the icons in one place. I'm John Melby. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time.